of the internet. My name is Kendrick Tran, also known as Kendrick Train, also known as a train off track. And for those of you that don't know, I've actually been interning at Fall Haber Communications, a PR slash overall like media marketing company here in Toronto. And that's actually today why we're here on Microsoft Teams as opposed to the typical Zoom or even in person. But who's been in person? I do not know. Um, but that leads me to the person I'm here today with, or who I'm here with today, um, the CEO and founder of Fall Haber Communications. If you want to go ahead and give us a little intro of yourself. Hi, Kendrick. Nice to be online chatting. Um, I guess it's our only option these days. Uh, yeah, well, i president and CEO of Fall Haber Communications. I started the business in my kitchen with a laptop 20 years ago. This is our 20th anniversary this year. And it seems that we're back to kitchens and laptops all over again. Um, <laughs> yeah, we work across all the different lifestyle disciplines and fashion, beauty, home decor, real estate, food and beverage, um, luxury auto. We have a great team, an amazing office in Liberty Village in downtown Toronto. And uh, excited to um, chat to you today and keen on your interesting questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm happy that uh, you actually agree because I was surprised. I was like, she's actually going to take time out of her busy day to uh, sit down and record a podcast with me. I'm like, wow, I'm like very honored. Uh, and I know, uh, per and I know you were like talking to the team about it too, because Perry was telling me a little bit about that. And it was really, it was really awesome. I was so honored. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. Listen, you take time out of your busy day to learn and contribute to the team. And so I'm happy to happy to be here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, that being said, I know you used to work in fashion and I'm as you may or may not know, I'm like super interested in fashion. That's the where I want to that's the more specifically the area that I want to work in. Um, so I'm, and I know like on your LinkedIn that you used to work for various designers, like if you can tell me a little more about your fashion background. Yeah, um, it's interesting. And, you know, when people find our brand, find the Paul Haber brand, they often think, um, oh, well, you you know, you're you're in fashion. And we actually don't have a ton of fashion proper clients right now, um, partly related to the pandemic and the fact that no one can actually shop anywhere other than uh, pressing a button online. But um, fashion to me is not about a lipstick or a pant leg like it, it is also those things. Um, but it's about what people want to know about right now. What's in fashion? What's the conversation of the day? And so I think for, for me, fashion um, transcends just what we look like and what we're wearing. Um, but that said, um, I was very obsessed with fashion. I have a massive fashion magazine collection. Um, I know, I'm not, have you even been to the office yet? No, I haven't. Okay, no. well, you have to get into the office because it is open <laughs> and there's, you know, with social distancing rules and all that. But there's a, a crazy, um, I started uh, collecting magazines when I was 10. So there are magazines dated back to the early 80s and uh, Vogue, W, um, L, you'll see them all in there. I've, I've kept I've kept a few hundred of them. Um and I would wallpaper my walls with all the supermodels of the 80s. And, oh, wow. you know, I had, um, I you know, I'd buy two of one magazine so I could rip the cover off. Like I would wallpaper the whole, my whole bedroom uh, walls with all the modeling uh, photos. So I was obsessed with fashion from early age, for sure. My friends were in the modeling industry and I was, I worked in retail. I worked at Fairweather. It was my first real job. Um, and uh, slowly worked my way up. and. Um, I was working um, in the head office all while I went to university. I was oh, wow. taking a, I went to Ryerson. I have a commerce degree with a marketing um, specialty. And I was working for Dilex, which at the time was a North America's biggest retail conglomerate. So it was, um, Club Monaco was even a part of Dilex back in the day. Oh, I don't wow. know if you know, at the bottom of Lakeshore and Bathurst, there's the, a building with the tip top Taylor sign on it. Oh that yeah. That is a, it's a historical building. That's where I worked. So my wow. office was in that building uh, before it turned into condos in the 90s. And um, so, yeah, it was interesting, um, an interesting start in retail. And then I slowly um, 
uh, I got recruited out to work for a fashion designer called Joe for Kayak. And um, he's still doing his thing. And at the time, his clothes would have been on the cover of Flair. Like there was a whole Canadian designer moment uh, in the 90s and in the in the 2000s that um, isn't really happening now, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Um, like when was the last time a Canadian fashion designer owned the cover of Flair magazine? Um, sure. So yeah, it was, it was amazing. I was the fit model. I was the sales girl. I was the PR. Oh, I was wow. everything. When I started with Jofer, it was me and uh, and the cutter, the the guy oh, wow. Kelly, this amazing guy, and then the sewer. I can't think of her name now, but she was amazing. Um, yeah, and we expanded it, and I would do I would schlep my blue garment bags across and basically get on the plane and go to Quebec and go to Vancouver and sell and PR the clothes. So I do one stop at the media outlet and tell them, uh, you know, show them the collection and be, and, you know, tell them how amazing these lime green palazzo pants with a slit up the <laughs> side. were. And then I would turn around and I would go and sell that same pant outfit to the retailer saying, Oh, this, I was, I just was, uh, you know, at a media meeting with this journalist and they're going to be featuring it in the next issue. So you should buy an extra three. <laughs> oh that's so wow that's so cool yeah because that, that reminds me of like stories I, I don't know if you know but like if you follow Alexander McQueen's story very well uh, like very yeah. in-depth but he like I actually have a couple tattoos for him for example but um I, in his story he kind of did that for himself and it's really mm -hmm. cool to see like you really being you really having that experience like that's so well I think wow. you know I I don't I don't have a PR background proper. Like I didn't go to PR school. I'm not a publicist. I'm an entrepreneur. I see opportunities. Yeah. And I think that for me was what I was doing back then in my twenties, I saw an opportunity. I knew that, you know, if I wore the, the green Palazzo pants to the meeting, I looked amazing. I was the fit model for the pants. And then I would talk about the pants and then I would sell the pants and then I would get the pants placed in the media. And it was just this sort of 360 made total sense to me. It worked. Oh, wow. That's, wow, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> wow. I, and do you think like that your retail experience kind of helped with that or? Totally. I, I, I still say in when I'm meeting new clients that um, I understand the end game here. This isn't about a swish party or a fabulous Instagram post. It's totally yeah. not. It's about money in the till. We're not, we're not in a, this isn't a charity situation. If they don't sell lipsticks, they can't pay us. And so I yeah. really fundamentally understand the connection between what we're doing every day and people's bottom line. So absolutely. The retail piece, I loved it. I totally get it. You know, it's about connecting with customers. It's not about, um, it's not only about, you know, what looks great. It's can you deliver? Oh, for sure. And that's where the entrepreneurial minded part of our four part value program comes to play. We think like our, an extension of our client. We're not thinking about some cloud in the sky and, and how to make it pretty. We're thinking about how can I spend money in a way that's going to deliver value for the client. Oh, wow. That's, that's amazing. And that actually, that actually relates because I was going to ask, like, what made you want to get into being an entrepreneur? Like you had this career, you were, you know, you could have easily continued to work for Jofer, but like, so what made you be like, oh my God, like I need to start my own business. And what led you to starting your first company slash website, islideas.com? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's, it's, there's no magical sauce. Um, there were many late nights and tear filled mornings worried about, you know, how am I going to do this? Am I good enough to do this? Um, so there's no, there's no rule book. And I think that's the one thing that I've learned over all these years um, and, it, and for some people, they're just, I'm going to start a business. And it certainly wasn't that way for me at all. I had what I like to call the quarter life crisis. I don't know if you've had yours, Kendrick, but everyone has <laughs> one around 25. Um, and I, I just, I was getting bored with what was happening. You know, the plan with Jofer was to expand into the UK and that didn't happen. Um, and, uh, the business didn't 
move forward in the way that I was ready to do. Like I was ready to get my stilettos on and get on a plane and go to Europe and open that showroom because we'd already opened the New York showroom. Um, and so I ended up going on a trip. I went to Greece and I had what I call my quarter life crisis where I, you know, flopped around on the beach and, yeah. you know, topless on the beach with my Swedish friends that I'd met. And I, it was like, what, who am I, what am I doing? And I came away from that month long trip uh, with, I sell ideas. That's what I do. Yeah. I uh, come up with ideas and I sell them to people. I take other people's ideas and sell them to other people. Um, I'm an idea factory and, a, and an idea um, shaper. And I came back and someone said to me, this was 2001, um, uh, the 9-11 had happened, which I know wow. isn't perhaps something that's imprinted on your mind, but for my generation, it totally is. And it was devastating. And it was a real wake up call in general. Like I was on my, on the couch. I was living with my sister at the time. I'd quit my job. I was thinking like, what am I doing? And, um, I got phone calls from some of the retailers that I had sold clothing to for a bunch of years through Jofer saying, what, what are you doing? Where are you? Come help us. And I wow. registered iSellIdeas.com and my brother, who's a graphic designer, designed my first logo. I should get you a copy of what it looks like because it's... I would love, yeah. Yeah, there's a whole other thing. In fact, you haven't been to the office. is crazy. So in two, the January 2001 El Quebec issue, there is eight pages of me in there. You will love oh, it. Oh, wow. Uh, oh. It's fabulous. It's a black and white. And it's it was like my one and only modeling moment. And it was all about... Um, just girl with style. And uh, I knew the editor who's since passed away, but um, it's an amazing thing, Kendrick. You're going to love it. Um, oh my gosh. Um, and uh, I'm wearing Gucci and Calvin Klein and Ooh. all the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the Gucci outfit had to get shipped back to Vogue because they were shooting it the next day. So yeah, you'll love it. You'll love it as a fashion guy. Um, and um, I'm totally off track now. Um, where were we? Uh, we're talking about uh, you being featured in the L because of yeah, so like before that. Oh, like uh, that you had clients hitting you, the old clients hitting you up, and that's why you decided to register your business. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm totally off track. I don't usually remember that magazine, so you 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 caught me there. Um, <laughs> Conversation a lot. Oh yeah, the logo. Okay, back to the logo. Oh, yes. So the logo is an outtake. It's a it's like a bitmap of one of the photos. So when you see the logo and in, in, in the picture, you'll, you'll, you'll see it. I'm sorry, we can't share it on the screen right now. Um, so I had this logo and it was Christine Fallhaber marketing, public relations, I sell ideas.com. And I mailed hard copies of these beautiful note cards and a beautiful, I remember spending $500 on these business cards, which at the time I didn't have any money. It was like crazy, but I knew that it had to be polished, which leads me to the second of our four values polish. Yeah. It's about having nice fingernails. It's about having a presence um, physically, but also no spelling mistakes. And also so that the client doesn't feel like death by paper cut, that there's yeah. a polished experience. It's really important because they could just go to somebody else. So I knew that from, from the beginning when I mailed out these cards. And, um, and that was it. I had two retailers that were my clients. I built their websites. I did talk shows for them. I came up with customer newsletters. This is all way before cell phones, just saying. Oh, God. And yes. way before Instagram. There was no social media, right? There was oh. Hotmail and there was websites and that's about it. Um, <laughs> and then what happened was they told two friends and so on and so on. And so my reputation just built. And and then I had a, a this wonderful girl who was a model who... Um, called me the next day and said, listen, I need to work for you. Oh, wow. And I was like, what? And um, so I had started with employees. And so by the second year, I had employees, part-time employees. I had interns. We called them. We call them trainees now. Um, yeah. and, uh, and, and it just kept going. And the business kept oh, growing wow. and it kept going. And I turned my, my apartment into my office. And I, I had this two-bedroom apartment at Dundas and Euclid. And um, my sister moved out. And I moved everything I owned into one of the bedrooms and it was this open concept space. So I had this 1200 square foot open space that turned into my office. And at the time, like 
local celebrities and people and art inter you know, I did interviews in there and artists wow. and, and um, yeah, it was pretty amazing. And I was there for a long, long time until I um, uh, realized that like, you know, I had five employees literally in my apartment, like it, we needed to expand. And so that's when we moved to Liberty Village. I, I had a mentor and a, a friend who had this great space at 1179 King, the current space we're in. Yeah. And it's this great, huge space. And her business partner had um, snuck out in the night and defaulted on his part of the office. And so she said, hey, I've got five or six desks. Do you want to just, do you want to come in? And a few years later, we took over her space and we took over the whole space. And, and here we are 20 years later. Wow, that's so awesome. So would you say kind of like, everything fell into place because I because one of my questions was going to be how do you go about selling especially in the startup phase right how do you go about selling yourself or your ideas to people that may make them want to buy them yeah so that's a great question um it's not easy and I think you either have it or you don't I think you're either an entrepreneur and you've got the grit and the tenacity to do it or you don't I, I don't think you can learn it I really don't um, either you're going to work for yourself or you're going to work for somebody. And, and there's a place for everybody in the world, right? There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a place for supporting cast, just like in fashion, just like in, uh, you know, just like in, in music. I used to sing, uh, by the way, my, my background was I used to sing at resorts in Muskoka when I was a teenager uh, and I went to a performing arts high school. So perhaps my oh, wow. performance piece of it, that creative performance piece has woven its way into what I do. Um, cause like you. I like things that look good. I like them to look yeah. nice. You know, I like them to sing and, and be, be special and be wonderful. Um, you know, it's probably why I love those magazines all those years and I <laughs> put them on my wall. Right. And now I have a Pinterest board. Now it's all on Pinterest. Um, so how do you do it? Um, you really, there's a couple things like practically you have to have your party line. You have to have your elevator pitch. It has to be tight. You have to believe it. It has to mean something. It can't just be wishy-washy or full of superlatives. It needs to be, oh, oh, you do that? Oh, I totally want that. So, and that, that comes with confidence and a, and a bravitas that's difficult to come by if you don't have it. Um, so practically, yeah, you got to have the right, you got to be able to say the right words and have, have it be delivered properly. And I think that a lot of people fall down there. There's people that are great at artistry or great at producing something or making something, but they're not great at communicating it. And mm. uh, I know you know a little bit about the the Gallup strengths that we do. We talk about it um, all the time. And um, communication is one of my is my number one strength. Um, so, but one of my other strengths is woo, which is winning other winning others over, which is one of my oh. favorites. And so I have a bit of that um, relationship capability which i think also helps in the mix of um developing connections and being able to sell i'm a salesperson i know yeah, i know what yeah. people want to hear so there's i think a little bit about a little uh, you know on the on the tactical side yeah make sure your party line is tight and on the softer side make sure that you um are you're reading the room and you're gotcha. saying the right thing so that the person on the other end is open gotcha and, you know, when you're starting out, you got to use your friends and family. You got to try things on. Like it took me a year to have people even to, for me to even feel comfortable saying the word fall haver. What, what is fall haver? Like, what is that? Is that like now I, it's, it's totally crazy because people will meet me and say, oh my gosh, I had no idea there even was a fall haver. Like, I just thought it was just a, it was a name, <laughs> which is <laughs> crazy, but it's also awesome because that means that the team is living the values and they're doing a great job. So that's the, there's a few, my few little tips on how to, wow. how to get your heard. So, but how do you get in the room? You know what I mean? Cause if, what, if you have all that perfected, how do you meet the right people or get in the room to have those conversations kind of thing? Give me a little bit more. What do you mean by get in the room? For example, like you said, a more, like flexible kind of more people person, I suppose, right? Yeah. So, but how okay, do well, you get people to see that when, like, how do you get into the room to show people that? So 
let's talk pre-COVID or post-COVID because yeah. this is it yeah. is difficult here. I mean, there are some tips and tricks that I've been suggesting to people during COVID, like LinkedIn is a great one and reaching out. But it starts, it starts small. It starts with your network. Who do you know? Who's your friend? Who can introduce you to somebody? Who can, um, who knows someone that you know? Um, cold calling is tough. So can you just start with your family? You know, is, does your uncle know somebody at X company that you're interested in? And I think mapping that out, it's almost like you could make a strategic heat map of all the different people I know and who might know who, and you just start. Okay. Yeah. Can you do cold calling? Totally. Can you, can you cold call me? And people did, have done it all through the pandemic, through my Instagram, through my LinkedIn. Hey, I'm so-and-so I'm interested. I follow you. Insert woo here, which is <laughs> totally excited about that article I read about you or wow. Congratulations on your stock valuation from last week. Or you see where I'm going here? Oh, Anyone can do that. It's called smart. It's called product knowledge. It's called do your research. Don't show up and be that kid that is, hi, I know nothing, but I think you're cool. Can you help me? No, don't waste my time. Hi, I'm this. My outcome is this. Can I have 10 minutes of your time? I do it all the time. So cold asking for somebody, but doing it smart is absolutely a tactic. Pre-COVID, post-COVID, when there's events and things, volunteer for stuff. Do stuff for free. Volunteer mm -hmm. at Fashion Week and roll up your sleeves and be the most charming human and useful human that you ever had. Yeah. This is this is a yeah. trainee program. Like dozens and dozens of our trainees have been hired and our employees. Look at Lindsay Singer. She's our longest run employee at 11 years. She was a trainee. She worked for yeah. free. We gave her an experience. She gave us an experience. She was able to showcase her skills. Absolutely. Work, roll up your sleeves and volunteer in every industry you can. Start building your resume. Um, other networking techniques. Uh, if you are in a room and uh, it's an event, let's say, and you bought a you bought a cheap seat ticket, you know, you couldn't buy the gala dinner ticket because you're a student or you're just yeah, starting out, but you bought the sure. cheap, cheap ticket, but you're in the room with other people that you might want to get in touch and talk to. Look around the room. Is there any comfort level anywhere? Anyone you know, anyone you've seen before, anyone that you follow on social, anyone you know anything about, get in, get in there, yeah. start with those people. And then maybe there's others with them. And then that's where your confidence has to go in. Hand oh, out, sure. full name, first and last name. Nice to meet you. Eye contact. Like, I, I, be I belong here. I'm a player yeah. at this table. Um, I think goes a long way. Oh, wow. I didn't because I've always been intimidated by networking events for that very reason. So now that you said that, that makes a whole lot of sense as to like how to go about interacting at a, a networking event. Okay. Yeah, the other, wow. thing, the other thing you can do, Kendrick, is with social media and smartphones at the ready, you could quickly do, you, you know, you, you, you notice someone across the room. Oh, that's so and so. I'd love to meet them. Quickly look at their socials jogs your oh it was a birthday something they were just recently in tahiti like mm -hmm. oh hi blah, blah 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 insert woo again which yeah. is I, I i i gotta say you know i do follow you on social and i noticed that you were just in tahiti uh i i grew up there no oh, way oh, i love oh, tahiti oh. all immediately you're you have you're in a relationship with this person Oh, wow. Okay. And do you think business cards, at least, especially now in this digital age, are useful or relevant? Even? No, I think they're, I think it's done. I think with the digital transformation of the entire universe. Um, and I, I don't, I wouldn't have said that because we do have beautiful business cards, which you probably have never touched. Right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. And that's a shame there. It's a beautiful, beautiful, um, brand and i you know i would teach people you know hold them with two hands eye contact when you give them out i haven't given out a business card in a year so i think because I, I do feel like with tech, digital technology the idea of um maybe it's a virtual card of some sort but maybe there is still some um you know email signature 
correspondence, oh, you know, like maybe the phone's tap, maybe you just point the phone and, but because the, 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 the beauty of the business card was, it was a, it was a brand, like the Fall Haver mm -hmm. logo is, it's cool, right? Like you've mm -hmm. seen the logo, it's, it's part yeah. of perhaps why, what, what drew you to the business to begin with. Uh, so I think the logos and the imaging is, will, will, will survive, but an actual card, not sure. Not so sure. Gotcha. I thought that having a business card would be like that physical difference between everyone else and their digital like portfolios I, per se. Yeah. I, I again with with like are people gonna want to touch your business card post COVID? Like That's I think in a too. in a post well, I think in a in a in a future state. I don't I don't think there's touch I I think it's I think it's over. Gotcha. But but your follow up okay. email could be your calling card. Or your follow-up text, or your follow-up, whatever the next technology is, is is a way to do it. And that that you know, I talk about the the values again about polish. You follow up immediately. You don't wait for them to follow up. You ask them for their email or their text or their or their phone number, and you follow up and and give them a polished experience. Gotcha. Okay. Because I I always thought asking for that information was a little too eager or aggressive. Even if so you don't ask, you don't get. Kendrick, if you For don't sure. ask, you don't get. For sure. Okay. Well, that being said, <laughs> um, so in my first week working here, we we kind of discussed, we had a call and we discussed imposter syndrome. And I would love to hear more about your experiences with that and like challenges you face being an entrepreneur in this realm and how you deal with that. Yeah, I think, you know, it's interesting. And there's been some backlash about imposter syndrome People call it a bunch of different things, but I do think, you know, as humans, most of us are our own worst enemy. You know, we, we, we don't want to toot our own horn as, as it were. And we, we worry that we're not good enough and we worry that someone might be watching and we might fall down. And, you know, it, it's just, these things are normal. And when you're on display, when you're an entrepreneur, it's 10 times harder. Like, do you think that this celebrities are so fabulous and they're so they're so perfect and they don't worry about their work all the time. Of course they do. They just have the special sauce of really wanting to do it yeah. and the ego of really thinking that they can do it. But yeah. everyone has worries and doubts. And I think, you know, when it when it when it first came to be and I I started to make some traction and people started to call me and say, oh, I heard about you through this other client. You know, those things were ego boosts and they kept mm -hmm. me going to the next one. And then there are down days where you feel like, oh, what if they don't pay? And what if they don't value my work? And what if I disappoint them? Those are really tough things. And I, I, I think everyone feels them. How do you get to the next? It's just tomorrow's another day and I'm going to try harder and I'm going to ask better questions and I'm going to uh, make sure that each day the client feels like this was worth it. And um, and that's, I think that's really a, a key takeaway. It's making sure that you're asking the right questions and that you're showing up and that you are of value or of mm -hmm. maybe extra value <laughs> so that yeah. they feel that they had, they got, they got a deal. Wow. This is so amazing. I got, I got a deal. This is, I have to, <laughs> I have to keep this person around because it's so useful for me. Oh, wow. That's awesome. And I know for example, um, that being said, like with you sharing that and I, and you, well, oh, sorry, part of that conversation was us talking about being a woman entrepreneur as a part of that. So how are you, and an industry filled with like women, especially Caucasian women, how do you go about like providing opportunities and mentoring people within other communities such as the BIPOC and queer community? For sure. It's it's and it's obviously 2020 was an interesting, uh, difficult, but also I think fortuitous moment for, for on many levels, in that, you know, the 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 raising of awareness around um, racialized communities. Um, as difficult as it as it is and as horrifying as it is, it also is a huge opportunity for change and um, just in general, like 
when so you know a few things that we've done uh, within Fall Haver um, is um, and I think I think you know we have a Ryerson Award that we grant one female um, for we, we we launched it at our 50th anniversary for 15 years so I guess this will be our fifth year doing it and we actually transformed that award to be specifically favoring um, a female in the BIPOC community so oh, that wow. was a great thing. Um, there's a recent blog post about that, uh, about the recipient. So that's one small thing. We've raised awareness in the schools. Um, I'm on the board at, at the fashion board at Humber, and it's definitely a topic oh. of conversation of where, um, you know, who are they, where are they recruiting? Which neighborhoods are they going to? Why is there such a shortage of diversity in the program? Why are there mostly Caucasian people in the program, like it, it's yeah. it's systemic, right? Um, also, we we launched F Consults, which is a consulting arm of our business, and we we offered pro bono um, to members of the BIPOC community, and we were able oh, to support wow. some wonderful entrepreneurs uh, through that program. Um, even the whole team, we you know we we underwent some interesting training at the in the fall or summer fall of last year, and. Um, it just opened everyone's eyes to how we could also support and inform our clients. Wow. What influencers are they choosing? Is there a diversity in the program? Uh, you know, what opportunities can we afford them um, in terms of shedding light on other communities that they aren't even reaching? So, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> so I think it's, it's a slow burn, but it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for change, I think all around. And, you know, within Fall Haber, we're, we're super keen. So if you have any, any humans of any race or, um, cultural background, we're, we're, we're all ears, especially with the remote work. I find that that's another one. It doesn't need to be somebody who can afford to live downtown Toronto. We have, yeah. in, we have trainees from all over the place that yeah. are virtual. And that has also afforded us um, the opportunity to have a more diverse uh, trainee group, which then turn into employees. Like, as you know, we just yeah. hired two, two people that were trainees. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's oh, wow. a short answer there. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. That's, 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 I actually learned a lot just from that one statement Good. that you had. Um, but also, because, that being said, I know you also are a mentor at the Fashion Incubator, which is something I'm actually interested in joining and have were, was very hesitant to. Um, and you're also on the forum for women entrepreneurs. You're a mentor. So mm -hmm. what does being, because as someone that's looking for a mentor or mentors more so currently, what does having a mentor or being a mentor look like? Yeah, I think we all need mentors throughout our whole life. You probably have one or two, you just don't know it. It don't it doesn't need to fit into a box, Kendrick. The a mentor is someone who helps you give your head a shake. It's someone who instills confidence. Um and uh they, you know, they could be a family member. They could be someone um in your network. So I think what you know, getting a mentor is it's they don't come they don't hang on trees right like they're not they're not easy to find um and they can come in different shapes and sizes so you might already have one if you're looking for one make sure you have a specific goal in mind or something specific that you want to get out of it because people like myself like we're busy we have a million priorities mm -hmm. we're absolutely happy to give back on many occasions but it it can't be random it has to be I need to know what you want to get out of it so that I can provide value. Similarly to my clients, if there's no value, you're not learning anything, then it's, there's nothing in it for me either. So mm -hmm. make sure you have, you make sure your, your, your backpack is filled with what you want to get out of it. Specific questions, do your research, don't waste their time mm -hmm. and just ask, you know, don't know that you need to say, hi, can you be my mentor? I think it's um, a mentor relationship is needs to be two, two ways so yeah you're going to get something out of them but maybe they're getting something out of you like i mm -hmm. i when i mentor young people i'm i might have questions for them uh you know oh tell me about this 
new social social media platform or you know maybe i interview them about something that might help a client like there there's yeah. a give there's a give get um in a mentor mentee relationship i think so how do you go about starting that like just asking just message for example especially online right like do you just go message someone a question and then hope it turns into a conversation like yeah you yeah know? you can again come equipped don't don't send a random question like tell me how you got started like really you could probably google that um yeah for sure you know i i'm just like i was talking earlier about the networking the same rules apply just be specific make sure it's targeted um LinkedIn is a good place, you know, when we're all not in person um, to ask your question. Ask, ask for 15 minutes of their time, but be specific with a purpose. And then if perhaps a relationship sparks, you know, it's on you to follow up. It's on you yeah. to keep the conversation going. Like one of our trainees that's leaving today, tomorrow um, actually it messaged me on, on LinkedIn. She oh, she wow. asked me for an informational interview and I told her about the trainee program. She didn't know about it. And then now she's been, it just finished her trainee program with us. So I was happy to give her some advice. She had wow. specific questions. She was very smart on the, on the, on the call. She was very smart. She was informed. And um, I was happy to recommend her to the, the leaders that run the trainee program at Ball Haber and, and yeah. say, Hey, this girl messaged me. She's pretty great. Now, if she, if she wants me as a mentor, she'll probably uh, keep in touch. She'll send me a yeah. note once she moves to another company and she'll say, Oh my gosh, I just started this new job. And I, I'd love to talk to you for a couple minutes. I know you had such, I had an amazing experience. Remember that time yeah. when blah, blah, blah happened <laughs> and I'll say, Oh, right. She was so sweet, you know? And then eventually she hires us maybe, you know, Yeah. it all comes oh. around. It all comes circle of life. Gotcha. Okay. I, I think, I think you're right about in terms of maybe I'm just putting a, like a box. Right. So I think that's very, very eye opening. Um, but I did but that being said, I did want to ask some more unconventional questions. And then, of course, we're going to go down and play the we're not really strangers games. I'm going to ask one unconventional question um, and then we'll get into the game so that we can wrap it up. Um, but so one thing I really wanted to ask was what title would you give this chapter of your life? And this chapter can be like how many, however many years you want, whatever you would consider, whatever you think is appropriate. Oh man. <laughs> Some words come to mind. I don't know that I've like hustle definitely comes to mind. Hard work, hard work and hustle. Yeah. But I um, what would you can you give it a name like a like a okay. uh, title of book. I mean tw 20 years of hard work and hustle. Uh <laughs> I didn't leave anything on the table. Uh I don't know is that good enough? Yeah, that works. Okay. That's guys, I always like asking like these weird kind of questions. So actually, I'm gonna ask this one more then. Um, sure. so what are you most passionate about besides selling ideas and well we're hustling and working? Like what are you most passionate about? What you would you say? I I'm an entrepreneur at heart and I really enjoy providing value, seeing a brand lift up, seeing a, seeing a, a retailer sell more, seeing, seeing a business be successful as a result of our hard work and hustle. Oh, wow. That's awesome. <laughs> Did not expect that answer. Um, but that being said, as per every episode that I do, every episode of my podcast that I do, we always play a game called We're Not Really Strangers. And just so you know, Christine, I'm just like, I go through it for the listeners so they understand what's happening. Sure, um, well, I don't and, know it either, so go through oh, it for okay, me. perfect, perfect. <laughs> so it's a game called We're Not Really Strangers. Um, it's designed by an artist, Kareen, and it's kind of like, have you ever played Cards Against Humanity? Yes, yeah, there's a kid version as well. I have kids, so there's I have a oh. 10 and a 12 year old, and there's a kid version which has a lot of things, um, a lot of words that that kids like to dirty <laughs> words that kids like to listen <laughs> to, that kids like to say. <laughs> but yeah, so this game is basically kind of like Cards Against Humanity, not really, 
but in, in a more um in a way to get you to know to get to know each other on a deeper more less surface level um way all right so yeah so there are three levels to the game there's perception connection and reflection and you're you're supposed to gradually go through them as you play maybe have like a glass of wine stuff like that but for the it's 11 20 kendrick we're not going to start drinking at 11 oh no for sure no for sure for sure <laughs> i mean we could but we won't <laughs> Um, so I already picked a, a level for us. I picked connection and I have three questions that I would love for you to choose one of them from. Okay. I just thought, I, thought, I just thought all three of these would be very interesting. All right. Um, so first of all, one is what's been the best compliment you've ever received from a stranger? And then the second one is what do you crave more of? And then the third is what are you still trying to prove to yourself? So you can pick out of the All right. Um, well, I'll just pick the last one because it's 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 interesting. We talked earlier about the imposter syndrome. Exactly. And even today, after 20 years of success and millions of clients and dollars in the till and sales and all that stuff, I still have moments where I wonder if I'm good enough. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And so pr proving to myself that I'm that I'm that I'm enough. Wow, that's a, that's really interesting coming from your perspective too. Because again, in my opinion, I think Fall Haber is probably one of the biggest like PR marketing agencies in ca Canada. I think I'm not too like obviously like I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I, that's what I see like from my opinion. Um. So that's really interesting to share that like kind of vulnerable perspective about it as well. Um, but in terms of my, because I usually the way I usually do is I answer the question as well. Now you um, have to answer the question. What are you still trying to prove to yourself, Kendrick? <laughs> I I think it's actually crazy that you say that too. Because even though I'm nowhere near like your level of success per se, I definitely agree in in that same sense. But not necessarily that I'm good enough, but that worth. I think. Again, so back tying back to what you were saying as well is what I'm still trying to understand that when it comes to like doing internships and working with people that I have stuff to offer and we just have to I just have to show it to them. Basically. You, you know what? You're doing it. There's a there's you, you're, you're doing it. You're building up all these experiences. There's a, a lyric from an Alanis Morissette song that has always stuck with me and it's you know, you'll know who you are when you know what you're not. And I, I feel like these are the times when you're young and you're trying things out, try things out, try all kinds of things. Don't decide for yourself right now what you're good at and what you're not good at. You don't know. Try it on. You haven't done, uh, you know, all these different aspects of, of, you know, digital marketing and public relations. There's a million different aspects. Try, learn Adobe, learn how to take pictures, like try a bunch of things. Do do a bunch of insurance, you know, if you can afford to, you know, work and not not necessarily take home a big paycheck, try try a bunch of things on because you don't know. You're gonna meet people, you're gonna put them in your pocket and you're gonna collect them along the way, and you're gonna put experiences in your pocket, and you're gonna collect those along the way. And all of those things turn into who you're going to be. And mm -hmm. they're they're all like little deposits in the Kendrick bank of knowledge <laughs> and relationships. Um relationships is is a third of our four pillars um of our of our values is relationship focused relationships you're building them right now your you know your your listeners are are part of your relationship network so i think those are um you're doing all the right things and and just know that you know each step you take each deposit in the kendrick bank is going to lead to the future uh you know, your future, your future genius. This point of the podcast is usually when I do all the plugs, social media plugs. So if you want to go ahead and plug your personal Instagram, Paul Haber's account, where you can find you basically. Sure. Sure. Well, fallhabercommunications.com. I'll spell it out. F-A-U-L-H-A-B-E-R communications.com. And uh, is our website. Our socials are at fallhabercom. So F-A-U-L-H-A-B-E-R-C-O-M-M. -M. And my personal uh, channels are CF underscore Paul Haber.
Oh, awesome. And of course, as my listeners know, you can find me at uh, Who's Kendrick on Instagram. I recently changed that, actually. Um, you can find my blog at atrainontrack.com, my portfolio at kendricktran.com. And of course, you can find us here every week on Sundays at A Train Off Track on all streaming platforms. So thank you all so much for listening. And I hope you gained immense value as I did from this podcast. Uh, and that's it. Bye. <laughs> Thanks so much.